was 17 I ran away from home and from everything I had ever known I was sick and tired Living in a town filled with narrow minds and hay Hello, I am Claudine Jackson and I want to thank you so much for tuning in to A Spoonful of Comfort. A Spoonful of Comfort is to remind us, you and me, that we all have comfort that we can give. And a spoonful is the very minimum of anything you can give someone. So we all have a spoonful of comfort. And grace be to you and peace from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. And grace and peace be multiplied unto you. May you be blessed. And may you be a blessing. Um, I want to say, uh, I'm the author of a book inspired by autism. Uh, also a book of poems, Let There Be Light. I, uh, my third book is a blog called A Spoonful of Comfort Also. But the Purvis Jackson Foundation, which I am the director of, wants to thank the donors. I thank all the people who have donated to the Purvis Foundation. Because without donors, we would not be able to help children with handicaps. We help children with handicaps with immediate needs, such as paying rent and utilities and uh, help for the parents uh, someone to take care of the child so that they can get a break or whatever the parent needs are. We provide many grants to the parents. So I want to say thanks to our donors. Uh, J.P. Morgan Chase made a sizable donation. The Good Works employees at J.P. Morgan Chase Bank. Uh, Norma Fambro, who is married to Henry Fambro of the Spinners, had an event and made a sizable donation. Uh, Susan Keskenny, one of our board members, made a sizable donation. And Wesley Gullick, one of our board members, has a golf event every year. And he raises money for the foundation. Now, when we talked about the foundation, Purvis Sr. was alive. And it was his uh, idea. It was both of our idea. We both wanted to do something for children with handicaps. So uh, the Purvis Foundation started but he did not live to see uh the fruition so that's why i thank people who have helped because without generous donors we could not do anything and the people that we are helping they cannot say thanks such as my son who uh can't speak so he couldn't say thanks so i had talked about uh, inviting parents to the uh, Mother's Day brunch this past weekend at New Mount Vernon Missionary Church, where I'm a deacon. The brunch turned out to be wonderful, so thanks to all the ladies on the committee who put forth such a wonderful brunch. Uh, the room was decorated beautifully. We had wonderful food. They presented gifts to the two oldest mothers in the church, and my mother is one of the oldest mothers in the church. So it was a wonderful event. That evening was the concert with the Spinners. And I don't know if you've noticed, uh, my theme song is by the Spinners. It's Ghetto Child, which uh, was a hit for the Spinners for ye years ago. And some of the words to Ghetto Child are, they used to laugh at me. The children called me names. I would run and hide, feeling so ashamed just for being born? Why must I be blamed, ridiculed, and shamed? We're all the same. Life ain't so easy when you're a ghetto child. Well, I equate that with a handicapped child because life ain't so easy when you're a handicapped child also. So I thank the Spinners for the theme song of Ghetto Child and for the um, sentiment of Ghetto Child. Now, the... Uh, the Spinner's show at the Masonic was very good. There was a comedian on who was so good that he's going to be one of my guests on my show soon. I also want to let you know that I do a radio show on Wednesdays on 1440 AM 
It's the radio station WMKM, 2.30 Wednesdays. I do a radio show, and it's called Let Your Light Shine. We were having a conversation about the world being in such a scary situation and so many uh, negative things going on in the world that those of us who have positive energy, we should be putting positive energy into the universe because uh, a lot of people are afraid, including me, but there are things that we can't there are things that we cannot control, but what we can control is what we do. What do we put into the universe? What kind of person are we? Now, my son, uh, who is handicapped, as you know, if you've watched the show before and seen me talking about him, uh, he's 42 now. He still can't read or write or talk, but I have learned from him. And I talk about people with handicaps a lot and parents of children with handicaps and all the challenges that we have. But I want to say hi and bless you to the other caregivers. I know there are a lot of people who are caregivers. There are people taking care of elderly and ill parents. There are uh, people taking care of their husband or their wife. I know that there are a lot of caregivers. And I want to say to the caregivers, remember, uh, you are God's hands here on earth. You are God's helping hands. Being a caregiver brings out the best in people because you are doing God's work here on earth. A lot of times without any help or without any appreciation because sometimes the people that you're giving care for can't say I appreciate you such as my son but it could bring out the worst in you because if you are worn out and weary from lack of sleep and if you're isolated and feel like you can't take another uh, step I understand that so I want to remind you caregivers to try to give yourself a little care because uh I have known of caregivers that passed away before the person they were taking care of. So if you are a caregiver, try to remember to get, some, get enough rest and maybe uh, you can get someone to help you and let you have a day off, which is what the Purvis Foundation does for parents of children with handicaps. Uh, and being a caregiver... From my son, I learned a lot of things from him that I never thought I would be learning from him. I learned about unconditional love. He loves me no matter what my clothes cost, no matter where my ha whether my hair is combed, no, whether I've, no matter whether I've cooked dinner. He shows unconditional love. He also taught me how to tune out things that are worthy of being tuned out because he's good at tuning things out. He also taught me how to live in the moment. He's not thinking about the past. He's not thinking about the future. He lives in the moment. And uh, a, a little story about past, present, and future. The past is history. The future is a mystery. But today is your gift, and that's why it's called the present. I'm going to take a short break, but I want to share a poem with you that I wrote about my son. It's called A Love So Pure. A love so pure that I am sure it's coming straight from God. This kind of love comes down from above and right into my heart. Your smiling eyes were a big surprise that I never thought I'd see. So who knew that one day you would be smiling down at me? I never thought the day would come when you'd be teaching me. But now I'm sure that when love is pure, it's unconditionally. So uh, stay tuned and we'll be back in a minute. When I was 
Thank you so much for sticking with me. And uh, thank you so much for adding comfort to the world. Because those of us who have comfort to give, that's our job because we're not getting any comfort from our leadership. The, the leadership has gone aground. And uh, if we look to our leaders for comfort and help, we will be very disappointed so we can comfort and help each other. I want to share a poem with you that um, I wrote, and it's about, it's called From the Bottom of the Spectrum. Now, autism is a strange disability, and it's called a spectrum disability because you have people on the higher end of the spectrum who can do all the same things that we can do and a lot of them are very intelligent and brilliant people. They may have uh, problems with social skills or hygiene or things. But, and then there's a whole range, and then there's the lower end of the spectrum, which is where my son is. And I spent a lot of time being depressed because he was on the lower end of the spectrum. And a lot of the things that I wanted to teach him, he could not learn. So this poem is called From the Bottom of the Spectrum. From the bottom of the spectrum, I'm just laying on the ground. From the bottom of the spectrum, I'm so tired of being down. From the bottom of the spectrum, I'm getting tired of the night. From the bottom of the spectrum, I looked up and saw the light. From the bottom of the spectrum, I looked up and saw the sun shining down upon me, saying, your work is not yet done. From the bottom of the spectrum, now I'm here to talk to you and glorify my father because he brought me through and he'll do the same for you. I want to remind you that all of us go through seasons in life and we have hardships and trials and tribulations and they are supposed to bring us closer to God. And if we rely on God, he'll give us strength. So I want to talk about letting your light shine. My uh, uh, radio show is called Letting Your Light Shine. And it's to remind us that we all have a light that we should let shine. Um, Susan Fine, a quote from Susan Fine, who said that all major religions believe that everyone has a light inside that's pure. But as we get older and things happen, our light gets covered by so much dirt and the trials and tribulations dim our light. And we have to consciously work on keeping our light shining. So I want to remind you to let your light shine. Your, your light is your smile, your kind word, your soft answer. If you feel like you don't have a light, if you can smile, if you can uh, be kind, that's also a light. People need that. We need more of that in the world. I was in the darkness and the wilderness because uh, I was trying so hard to cure my son who could not be cured. And I saw a scripture in the Bible one day. Someone can tell me where, where it's found. And it said, that who the Lord hath made straight, that who the Lord hath made crooked, who can make straight? So it dawned on me, I'm trying to make somebody straight that the Lord made crooked. So... I had to come out of the darkness that I was in. I wasn't in the darkness of evil and wrongdoing. I was in the darkness of depression and trials and uh, hopelessness and despair. So I know that feeling. But God can bring you out of it. When you're in the darkness, if you start searching for the light, if you say, I'm tired of being down, which is 
uh, my sentiment from the bottom of the spectrum. I was so tired of being down. And uh, once you're tired of being down and you decide that you want to lift yourself up and get up off your knees, um, God, God will help you. He's waiting to help you. Now, um, a scripture, one of the scriptures, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom should I fear? If you remember, the Lord is my light and my salvation. And if you're looking for the light, your Bible is full of scriptures that contain light. In fact, the word light is mentioned in the Bible over 200 times. Um, another quote I want to share with you is from a writer. His name is Richard Covey. And Richard Covey said that darkness is capable of anything. Though the terrors of the night be all around me, still I will not add to the horrifying twilight. I will celebrate the light and glorify the dawn. So that was my decision that I will not add to the darkness and you will not add to the darkness because if you're watching this show, I'm sure that you are not one of the people that are adding to the darkness. And if you are, you better stop because karma is going to get you. You know, karma is what you put out into the universe is what you get back from the universe. So if you're adding to the darkness in the universe, what you're going to be getting back from the universe is darkness. If you're adding to the light in the universe, what you're going to be getting back is the light. So um, light can chase away the darkness, but darkness can't chase away the light. And those of us that have a light, it is time to let, let it shine. Now is the time. I, I know you're familiar with that old gospel song. Now is the time to do what is right. Now is the time for soon comes the night. Now is the time while the sun's shining bright to get right and serve the Lord. Also to get right and serve yourself. We have to uh, do things for ourselves. We can't always sit and wait for somebody to do something for us. So uh, re remember to let your light shine. Also, there is a, uh, a quote about your pilot light, that we all have a pilot light inside, and that when we think our pilot light is dim, when we think it is, it is going out, it's not going out. It's still there. We just have to uh, remember Sometimes we have to remind ourselves, I have a pilot light. I've got a light. It's dim, but I can brighten it up. And God needs your light to shine in the darkness. Uh, he doesn't need your light to shine in the bright places. And that sometimes God sends us into the dark because we have a light. And he sends us into the dark so that we can brighten it up. Uh, there's rain in life. There's storms in life. But you have to have the rain to see the rainbow. And sometimes when you think it's things are at its worst, the clouds park and you see the clouds part and you see the rainbow. You never know when God will show up. And sometimes when God shows up, he shows out. Now, when I was burdened and depressed, there were people who were trying to help me, people who worked with my son and taught me that he was worth my time, people who tried to help me and carry my burden, help me carry my burden until I could put my burden down. So one day I put my burden down and I said, glory, glory, hallelujah, since I laid my burden down. Now, my burden was autism. Autism is still a part of my life. But I was more burdened than I had to be. And people taught me that there is something that can be done. 
you know, the doctors were saying he'll always be like this. There's nothing we can do. But um, the teachers were saying, well, we, can get, we can't get him from point A to Z, but we can get him from point A to D, E, F. And that gave me hope. And one of my uh, favorite scriptures is Romans 8, 24, 25. For we are saved by hope, but hope seen is not hope. For what a man or woman see it, what, why do you yet hope for? So I ask myself the question, is there hope in my situation? And the answer was, yes, I didn't feel it then. And also another uh, great scripture is Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not harm you, plans to give you hope for the future. So those scriptures helped me when I was down and everything was dim and I thought I, um, I can't make it, but you can make it. There are people that will help you make it. And then when you um, make it, then you can help someone else, as I'm trying to do. Uh, when you're in the darkness, the darkness can surround you, but it doesn't have to come into you. Uh, there's a lot of negativity going on in the world, toxins and poisons and bad things. So you do not have to let them determine your life. You can determine your own life. The, the words in the Bible help you. The scriptures that I have quoted with you are scriptures that have helped me. There are some scriptures that may help you. Uh, if you're not who you want to be, think about this. I'm not who I used to be. I'm not who I want to be. And I'm not who I'm going to be. We all have free will. We all can change. We can all make our lives better. And we can make someone else's life better. Um, God is still working miracles in the world. And he giveth power to the weak. And to them that have no might, he increases strength. If you rely on God, and take your burdens to him. But they say that we take our burdens to him, but we don't leave them. So take your burdens to him and leave them there. And you can't solve everything, but maybe you can solve something. That's what the Purvis Foundation does. We can't cure any child's disability. We can't... Uh, solve all the problems, but we can do a little something. We can't help everybody, but we can help somebody. I've told you this story before, but I'm going to repeat it. It's the starfish story where the man was walking along the beach and he was picking up starfish, throwing them back into the water because if the starfish stayed on the beach, they would die. They had to be thrown back into the water. So he's walking along the beach and he's throwing starfish into the water. And another man comes along and says, I don't know why you're doing that. You can't uh, help them all. It won't make a difference. And he said, uh, the man that was saving the starfish picked up a starfish and threw it back into the water. And he said, it made a difference to that one. So that's what we try to do. We try to make a difference to uh, someone. We can't solve all of their problems, but maybe we can make life a little, little easier for them and solve whatever the pressing problem is. People have done it for me. And you remember, it is no secret what God can do. What he's done for others, he'll do for you with his arms wide open he'll pardon you so it is no secret what God can do another uh, scripture I'd like to share with you is Psalms 23 13 I am still confident of this I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living I am still confident 
of this. I have seen the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I have seen it. I have been a witness to the power and the glory and the beauty of the Lord. And let us not turn our face from that part of life. Uh, Psalm 5.1 says, Give ear to my words, O Lord. Consider my meditations. I want to say that I sought the Lord and he heard me and he delivered me from all my fears. Um, that is Psalm 34, verse 4. And John 3.21 says that anyone who lives by the truth comes to the light so that his works may be shown to be accomplished by God. God has blessed me even when I thought he wasn't blessing me. He was blessing me, and I am so thankful. And I uh, want to share this little poem with you. It's, it's not one of mine. It's one from Norman Vincent Peale. God is my help in every need. God does my every hunger feed. God walks beside me, guides my way through every moment of the day. I now am wise, I now am true, patient, kind, and loving too. All things I am can do and be through Christ, the truth that is in me. It's about time for me to go. I hope we gave you some comfort, and I hope you give someone some comfort. Tune in again next week at uh, 1.30 on WHPR. For a spoonful of comfort, I am Claudine Jackson, and uh, I'll be looking forward to speaking with you next week to give you a spoonful of comfort, hopefully, and hope you give someone a spoonful of comfort. Thanks for tuning in. See you next week.